Hello, I'm Ultraviolet4, and this is part 10 of Hillock Fighter of Beer. We cleared out most of Zot 5 in the last episode. We found out that, in fact, you cannot cast Shatter with zero Earth training. <laughs> so, uh, at some point in the future, we're going to experiment with various levels. It might be the case that, um, you know, maybe with a little bit of training, your random melee character can cast Shatter. Um, even if not very reliably, or it might turn out that I was totally wrong and you do in fact need lots and lots of training to get it castable, but we'll see. Uh, we've got some kind words of encouragement here from Nihil, who's telling us to give him hell. I think what he means is he wants us to take our orc followers and bring them to hell, as in give them hell. And he's not too far off, but we've got a couple more runes to do before we actually head into hell and into the extended areas of the game. So we did our silver rune of Zot to get a third rune, and then I I brought us here to the abyss on, oh sorry, to Zot on a bit of a side mission. So now it's time to return to the standard path of what you do in an extended game, which is the other two standard third runes, the abyss and the pits of slime. Both of these are not great for a BO worshiper. Um, when you're in the abyss, you tend to get teleported to random other places, which means your orcs can't stay with you in the abyss. Um, and then for the pits of slime, your orcs, your orc followers are really dumb in the slime pits. They, um, they completely ignore the acid walls. They take acid damage and they just die. So I don't like them in there very much either. Um, so I tend to do both of these two runes on my own. I mean, uh, the way that this works as well is that I believe orcs that are in the abyss that you don't bring out with you essentially get lost. I don't think you can recall orcs out of the abyss. I used to think that you could, but now I don't. Um, and a part of this, um, if you ever watched the first BO run that I did, uh, we had an Urug waifu, she got banished and then we were never able to find her again. So while we're in the abyss here, we'll need to keep an eye out for Urug. Maybe, maybe she's still lost in there somewhere and we can finally get her back. This is making me sad. <laughs> I get so attached to these characters, I'm actually tearing up a little. Alright, uh, well maybe we'll find Urug, we can be reunited. Um, but we'll see. Okay, so things we want to know in Abyss, um, we'll not bring our orcs in, so we'll go in alone. While we're in here, it's possible that Bio might gift us orcs, and if that happens, I might see if I can find exits and bring them out again, so we can get more of an army. <laughs> uh, but the trick to the Abyss is to teleport early and teleport often. Your teleports are delayed in here, on average about 10 turns or so. Um, but because the abyss is infinite and ever-changing, once you teleport away from a monster, you'll never see them again. So as soon as you see something dangerous, or even if you just see a dangerous situation developing, just read a teleport and you'll be fine. As long as you do that, it's very difficult to die in the abyss. The main way I think people die here is they get too greedy. Maybe you come across a... Um, well, I mean, okay... To be fair, a lot of people die in the abyss because they're here too early because you got banished or something and your character is just not ready for it. But characters like this that come in that are actually ready for the abyss, it's probably more like you find a, a rune vault and then you just get too greedy and you try and stay and you just get overwhelmed. Or similarly, you meet lots of monsters, they keep coming in and they're coming in and you just don't teleport away for whatever reason. So we'll try to avoid those. We've got a bunch of different spectators. Getting a bit of stage fright here. I'm not used to having this many live spectators on the Australian server. Um, we need to dive down to Abyss 3 though. That's the first level on which we can find the rune. Just checking that we've got our correct rings on. We do. Um, we got to watch out for mutators in here. If we see any, well it depends what they are. Some of them can't see invis. So we can turn in, see we've got a bunch of orcs. Uh, these guys are all just going to get killed by fireballs I expect. No, one became a warrior. Okay, well, 
Let's keep an eye out for exits, and we can maybe keep this warrior. Um, I think he's pro. There's a good chance that he's not going to make it. So he's very quickly becoming a knight. But the thing is, if we get teleported to a new area of the abyss, he'll be gone forever. Or at least that's how I understand it. So the only way to get him out is to generate an exit before we get teleported elsewhere. I also think he can't follow us down. I'm about 90% sure. Uh, monsters don't follow you down, as in hostile monsters. I think the same is true for uh, friendly ones. These, oh boy, okay, I need to retreat him out of the miasma. Um, this is really dangerous. You can never underestimate these star curse masses. Um, they ignore your AC, they're smite targeted, and if you're not killing them, they split again and again and again. He's become Wardock. Um, there's no point gifting him something because he's probably, we're going to lose him. I know it's a race against time. Can we, can we generate an exit before we get teleported somewhere? Here's our first guy. Uh, it's a Nekasek. He cannot see Invis. So what we can do is step behind our friend. In fact, we can just tell Wardock to kill him. There we go. And that way we won't get mutated. Uh, but we also could have stepped behind him, use our invisibility ability. That's, that's so hard to say. Invisibility ability. <laughs> um, and then it wouldn't be able to see us, so we'd be able to fight it ourselves. Also could smite him, but no real reason to do that. We're about to get tormented. Um, we both get tormented. That hurts. Nothing you can do about that. As soon as you hurt those guys, um, he's going to die here. Yeah, I thought so. Alright, well, bad luck, Wardock. Uh, you were probably going to die anyway, but um, you tried. Uh, there's a an unseen horror here, I expect. It's not going around. Uh, so, Smite can't miss. Uh, if you're ever really worried about something invis and you know where it is, you can always Smite it. I'm trying to remember, oh, okay, so this is a good example. We're low on HP because of the torment. We've just seen some star curse masses that are really dangerous. So we're just going to read a teleport scroll and then we're going to start running away from the star curse masses. I'm going to wait for that to kick in and then we'll be taken away forever. Uh, we can try to rest up here. Um, if we were really worried, we could quaff a potion of ambrosia and the increased regeneration rate on that would let us heal. But we're only on Abyss 1. Monsters, hey, that's the get we're leading out. I think we may as well take it. We'll heal up. Uh, but monster generation on Abyss 1 isn't very high. Um, it, it picks up as you get lower. Let's get that teleport scroll. I wonder, is it time to do our crossbow yet? We've got... We'll get invocations to 27. Okay, once we get out of the Abyss... Uh, we'll probably just be training armor, at which point I think it's time to go crossbows, get a ranged option up. Uh, maybe we'll train a little bit of earth magic, LOL. <laughs> uh, a bone dragon, that's fine. Monsters like this, they just do melee damage with 49 AC and 36 shield. We don't really care about at all. They have more broad axes around. Just that one enchanted broad axe in Vault 5. This whole game has not generated a single magical broad axe. The only one is the one that we made with a Bren weapon scroll. That is insane. Okay, these are not really bothering us. Okay, pull to a new region of the abyss. That's where, um, if we still had Wardock with us, he would have been left forever. Alright, there's our portal down. Let's go take that. Uh, so we're looking for one more. And then once we hit Abyss 3, that's where the rune will generate. Uh, there's our downstair. These guys are giving us bad mutations, but they're only transient. So at the moment, we've got minus 20% HP. We also occasionally are shouting. That's not a big deal. Um, as you gain experience, that will get rid of the transient mutations. Um, they're, they're usually annoying, but if you're not careful, they can be really deadly. If you've got one of those wretched stars, 
pelting you with mutations while you're fighting some other monsters. You might end up with minus 30% HP, really frail, berserk itis, something like that. And then you realize you're losing that fight and you think, okay, I need to, I need to read a blinking scroll. And then it turns out you have really blurry vision and it's going to take you forever. So you can't, you can't blink anymore. Or you, ha or you try to cough, heal wounds, and then um, you've got the thing that stops you. Oh no. Okay, let's teleport away again. Um, so it's another lurking horror who's going to um, torment us. So read the teleport. They're really fast, but maybe we can get away before he catches us. Uh, but yeah, so you can have a mutation that stops you gaining any health back from uh, potions. Alright, and so now that we're on Abyss 3, we're looking out for a Rune Vault. There is a particular tile that indicates it to you that you need to be on the lookout for. Let's put our Sea Invis back on for this. It's a Shadow Race. Um, I sometimes get newer players who are saying, you know, I tried to do Abyss as my third Rune. I ran around for two hours and I never saw a single Rune Vault. The Abyss sucks. Um, it's possible that you can be that unlucky. Um, I don't. Uh, let's just bring these priests out. We can. They can live. I mean, I don't know if that was worth it. We we're on Abyss Three, where the rune could spawn. I don't know. Was it worth getting three extra priests? Maybe. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but anyway, so I suspect that what's happening with those players is not that they're all super unlucky and they're not spawning any Abyss vaults. I think it's much more likely that they're just not recognizing when they see an Abyss Vault. So I'll point that tile out to you. Uh, we've got to get back to Abyss 3 now. <laughs> um, and then when we see one, I'll show it to you. But, oh yeah, this is a, a mutator. It's a Caco Demon. Has Malmutate. Needs direct line of fire. And, but these guys see Invis. So our region, sorry, our Invis trick won't work. I'm going to smite him. And just kill him. Do we one shot him? Really? That seems unlikely. I think he's just sitting behind this orange demon and hiding. Yeah, there he is. We'll go smite again so we kill him quickly. Uh, this ancient Zyme has made us sick. While we're sick, we don't regenerate HP. Seeing that we have 18 curing, I'm just going to cure it off. Uh, yeah, but so the other thing that you're looking for, just you. You might miss the tile, I grant that, but the other thing that you want is just when you're on Abyss 3 and deeper, look for symmetrical things. If you see stone walls that look suspiciously like someone has built them, so for instance, the Abyss is mostly random. Have a look around us, these walls are all just nonsense. Um, when you see a vault, uh, it's usually quite obvious because you've got symmetrical features, you have rooms maybe even doors, or just big areas. Um, keep an eye out for those. Not every vault is a rune vault, granted, um, but that will, if you treat all vaults like they might be rune vaults, that will probably up your chances of finding the rune. We found another brand weapon scroll. Uh, that's good. So uh, we're still trying to make, that is a hell sentinel. Uh, we're still trying to make other broad axes if we could get Say an elect one that would be very useful and extended. Uh, Hell Sentinel is extremely dangerous. This is an extended enemy. Um, they have Hell Damnation, cannot miss, ignores your AC completely, really hurts, and they have an Iron Shot. Um, in addition to just being extremely tanky and infinite MR, <laughs> so they're magic immune. Uh, we can, we could teleport away, but the thing is, he's on the edge of our line of sight. We could also smite him to death just fine, but the thing is, oh, well, we got blocked in, but we have, oh, well, there's a haste potion. We have boots of running, which make us faster, so he's a 10 speed enemy. We can just walk away from him um, until we meet a corner. No, I'll just leave. The more time we spend in the abyss, the more likely we are to run into Urug. <laughs> so that's okay. We'll start again. Uh, but we very easily could have just hit him with smite. We also could have 
I just teleported it away from him. It's okay, we'll we'll scum the abyss a bit more. Maybe we'll even find a magical broadax in here. If we could find a, a holy broadax, that would be amazing. Here's a Davo. Um a large shield. Okay, they can have magical large shields, that might be something that would be good for us. I'm gonna take that large shield out with us. At some point in the future we might want them all. There are probably a bunch around. Uh, a few, not that many. Uh, we'll just bring it out. Oh, okay, we got new friends. <laughs> okay, can we can we generate an exit? <laughs> I don't know. At this rate, I don't think we're ever going to get the Abyss Vault. I think we're just going to um, infinitely generate Orc followers. We have Baldo the Priest at the moment. It sounds more like a clown name. Baldo the Priest. <laughs> He's a bit of a joker, that boulder. Alright, so we lost a bunch of our orcs there. We got um, some enemies came up behind us. Not a big deal. Um, I would like to get this warrior out though. Okay. Uh, this is something that we could do to generate infinite orcs as well. Like if we if we actually hey here's a gateway out all right just like that we generate a new orc to add to our army but say say we did get to extended and then we decided hey we I actually do want to make infinite uh, we've got a new one of these things again lurking horrors I'm gonna read the uh, the teleportation uh, but so the point I was trying to make is if we really want to make infinite orcs we could just do abyss forever. Uh, and at some point, I'm sure the server would crash. What if you filled up every every available space on a level with an orc follower? What happens then? I don't know. I wonder if they would have thought thought about that. Because what what sane person or sane orc would ever do that? I don't know. But I don't know. Maybe that's a project for the future. Here's a gateway down. We're on Abyss Two. We're working our way back to Abyss 3 while looking out for Urug. <laughs> I don't think that one's happening, just quietly. Um, and we have generated a gateway out. So if you are looking to get out, there are, there are two different ways, or even going down, there are two ways that you generate gateways. One is just randomly by exploring. The other is that as you kill enemies uh, you have a chance of generating those as well and it depends, it's relative to your experience so if you're low experience um, if you kill an enemy that the game considers dangerous to you, we got pulled to a new region, uh, it's much more likely to just generate an exit I don't know if you saw it before, but we were fighting and it made a gateway out. See, like this would be an example of something that looks man-made. We've got, um, it's symmetrical, it's got grates in it. Uh, we're not on Abyss 3, so we know that can't be a rune vault. But say you were looking for, for one, you see something like this, it should pique your interest. You think, okay, well look, someone's built this. Let's go in and have a look. And see, look at this, more symmetry. You might sort of look for a rune vault, and in this case, you'd be kind of sad because it isn't one. But uh, that's that's the tip. Look for symmetry. Look for stone walls. Also, look for enemies that aren't usually in the abyss. Uh, so we're back to abyss three, and all right, we immediately spawn next to one. So this is our rune vault tile. This I don't know whether teal. I sometimes call it aquamarine. Um, I've never had someone give me a better color for it, so I'll keep calling it teal. Uh, this this tells you that there's a rune involved. I'm trying to walk around it a little bit further to see if there are more. Uh, but usually, they will surround the vault. Is there another one? Yeah, see, we've got more over here. So this tells you that uh, you should be exploring around in here. Now, you might, you might not find your way in immediately because it's just telling you on the outside. So walk around, keep trying to find um, 
where that tile is indicating you should go. Okay, here's a mad acolyte of Lagonu. He's part of this vault. Um, he's got a dagger of distortion. I'm just going to smite him to death. Um, I don't want... Oh, hey, we got gifted a knock. Alright, come on. Uh, this is a... It's kind of an interesting vault. Uh, we even got mesmerized there. The 4% mesmerized, so we need to smite her. Uh, and I can't save my orc because... Okay, I can't get in the way of the, the thing. Alright, so there's our... There's our rune. Uh, there are more mad acolytes, which we're just going to smite. Okay, good. Uh, we really need to start killing these uh, star cursed masses. Our orc got named. He is Corona. Okay. Coronug. I'm just going to call him Corona, like the beer. Uh, we pick up our rune. And then once we've got the rune, we are much more likely to generate exits out. Ah, see, we got pulled to a new region. So Corona isn't dead, but much like Urok, he's now lost in the abyss. Um, rip. I mean, I won't give him the F because he's not technically dead. And here's he even, here's even an exit. Uh, we can test this. So we've got our fourth rune now. Uh, if we recall all our orcs to us, I'm willing to bet that Corona won't be here. Let's see. So he, here's an Orc Knight. This list is enormously long. Uh, yeah, he's not. So that's basically how it works. Once someone gets lost in the Abyss, they're lost forever. Well, that was fast. Really? I thought that was kind of slow. Uh, Abyss is usually really quick. Uh, we, we went in and we left a bunch of times. Um, if you know what you're looking for, it's usually a fairly straightforward, fairly safe, and fairly fast rune. Alright, um, so quick check, is there anyone here who we can give stuff to? A high priest, uh, another priest, a bunch of priests. Yeah, well, one of them can have a plain... Uh, can have a plain trident. Uh, I could give one the large shield. Large shields make even your priest much more survivable but ah uh, they're random priests I don't care too much let's do another count how many warlords are we at 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 28 <laughs> that's uh, quite quite a number all right so it's time to get our fifth room now it's the slime pits once again I don't want to bring my orcs in we might get gifted some as we go, but I'm certainly not going to voluntarily bring followers in. I have some standards as a messiah. I know I'm often leading them to their deaths, but I don't want to um, lead them this this explicitly. <laughs> um, Alright, before we go, a couple of things that we need. We need to have our corrosion. We don't have that at the moment. Correct. Oh no, our only our corrosion in the game is in acid dragon scales, which I don't want to wear. That's going to completely tank our AC. So what do? Okay. It is possible to do slime pits without our corrosion. It's not ideal. You're going to take a lot of damage from acid blobs. Their acid spit really, really, really hurts. Um... But what you can do is take it real nice and slow um, and then once you get to the big final boss fight against the Royal Jelly, you can use a potion of resistance. Oh, sorry, knocking stuff off my desk. Uh, hope that wasn't important. Uh, anyway, because uh, potion of resistance gives you our corrosion. Um, so I guess that's what we need to do. Um, it's kind of a shame that our game hasn't spawned on corrosion, but I can show you how to do it. If you didn't have our corrosion in a three room game, you wouldn't go into slime pits, but we're doing a 15 room game. We're gonna need to go in sooner or later. I know that we um, we have these brand weapon scrolls for, um, for doing that broad ax, but I think I'd like to just see uh, what we find in slime pits first. You get a lot of good loot in slime pits. There might be more broad axes there. In which case, um, yeah, we'll do it then.
We'll do it then either way. Once we finish slime, we'll mess with another axe because our broad axe of freezing is perfectly fine in slime pits. So we're not really in a hurry to get a second one anyway. It's just, it would be nice in extended to have, um, well, you don't get Holy Wrath or Anti-Magic from branding. So the one we'd be after would be of electricity. All right, so let's go to slime. I don't know why I search for the entrance rather than just using the G menu. That was unusual. Uh, let's do that again. We'll go via the standard way, which is the G menu, and we'll go to slime pits. Yeah, so if this is really, really horrible, and we're just getting nailed on the early floors by um, acid blobs, we might have to leave and actually come back with the arc corrosion. Yeah, so we immediately meet two acid blobs. It really hurts. Let's see how we go. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. We're gonna get really badly corroded all the time. Um, fortunately, see, we ended up minus 16 corrosion just fighting that one acid blob. Not having our corrosion is gonna be ugly. Uh, fortunately, because of our good shield, we're gonna block a lot of their attacks. But yeah, minus 12. We're gonna have to be really, really careful in here without it. Uh, here's another one. Oh, right. Uh, let's do our crossbow. That will help us. That will give us a range attack. Yeah, yeah good thinking, Ultra. I said we we're going to do that after Abyss. Alright, uh, a couple of things. Let's get our bolts. We left... Oh, it's telling us where uh, one of them is. I want to know where the big stash is. We left 78 bolts. We left 500 bolts in Elf 3. We'll go get those and then we should have plenty. Probably forever. Okay, so we've got 1,314 bolts. Uh, that should be good enough. Let's get the crossbow. There it is. It's in layer 6. That is a great weapon. A plus 7 hand crossbow of elect that also gives extra strength and extra int. Let's put that on B. Uh, so I can now... We've got our axe on A and our hand crossbow on B. When I now hit the apostrophe button, it's going to switch between the two. I did that by doing equals I to then change the letters. Um, very handy tip. Uh, it's very good, this crossbow as well, with our gloves of archery, which are giving us plus four slaying on all ranged attacks. And now let's let's train our crossbows. Uh, hand crossbows are great. They don't require much skill. I think it's 12. 10. Wow, you only need 10 skill level to get to Mindalay. So we're focusing that. Let's bring crossbows to 10. I think while we're only training, oh no, we'll just train our crossbows, but I think there's an argument to be made that we should maybe turn dodging back on and maybe even start training our spells. But I think let's get crossbows to Mindalay so we've got a ranged option and then we'll worry about spells. Alright, so we want to go back to slime. Okay, and let's, I know there was a dude around here. Let's just keep going. You want to die of the slime pits. The experience is really not very good in here. Uh, there's never any loot until slime 5. And the enemies are dangerous. And especially when you don't have um, any arc corrosion. So you just want to get down to slime 5 as quickly as possible. And watch, our crossbows are going to go up pretty quickly, I expect. What is our aptitude? Minus one. So, um, he looks not fantastic, but not too bad. Here's a shining eye. They exist only to mutate you. They see invisible, so going invis won't help. Um, if you have other enemies around you, you can block line of fire and then smite it. Uh, but in our case, we can't do that. We don't have any summons we can make, like summon lightning spire, so we're just going to smite it and try to kill it before we get badly mutated. Excellent. We did not get mutated. On to slime 5. So this is going to be where our royal jelly is. Oh hey, we got a an orc wizard who's even got blink, so he is basically doomed. Uh, let's try our hand crossbow. We're pretty slow with it at the moment. It takes 1.4 for each shot, because uh, we're not yet skilled. But that's going to improve. All right. Um, why aren't we picking stuff up? Our auto pickup was off. Okay. Um, I want to just run straight into the middle. That's where I want to fight the royal jelly. In the middle. 
As you damage him, he's going to spit out slimes, and I don't want to be in the open, which is where you can start getting surrounded. Okay, so how do we want to do this? First of all, we want to buff up. Um, we've got 12 potions of agility, 6 of might, which is not that many, so I think I might save that. We're also really strong. Um, like everything else, we could just smite him to death, but I also, I don't know. We're going to be met by a bunch of angry slimes at the end, so we want to be buffed up for that too. 15 haste is so many, so we're going to haste, we're going to agi. I'm not going to might, uh, but I'm going to quaff a resistance so that we have a form of our corrosion. Okay, and then here's a secret the devs don't want you to know. Um, let's examine the royal jelly. He has one evasion, that is, he is terrible at evading things, uh, which means he will be netted almost every time by a throwing net, even if you have zero throwing skill. The way that throwing nets work are that as long as you can manage to hit the thing you're throwing it at, it will be netted. Um, and because his evasion is so low, it works, I want to say, 9 out of 10 times, maybe even higher than that. Uh, so we can net him. While he's netted, he won't be attacking us back, and we're going to get bonus stab damage from the nets. I mean, a broad axe doesn't give you amazing stab bonuses anyway, but every bit of extra damage helps, right? Um, another very good tip is that against the royal jelly, you can use phantom mirrors on him. Uh, it does a couple of things. One is that it helps block the royal jelly in, like this, because the royal jelly likes to what behind his um, summons, his summon jellies. So he'll surround you like this and then he'll run back. So you can't hit him and you get bogged down and fighting all the others. But if your phantom mirrored royal jelly is behind, he can't do that. Uh, also, your phantom royal jelly hits really hard, uh, much like the real one. So it's a big boost in DPS as well. Uh, now that we've got that, let's throw our throwing nets out. So we aim it at the real royal jelly. We hit, we have no throwing skill, but we hit anyway. Um, they don't want you to know this, by the way. That's a trick the devs definitely don't want you to know. So please don't spread that. That's a secret. Uh, don't tell anyone. Uh, but now that he's netted, we're going to start fighting him. And he's going to die really quickly. He's still netted. Is he even doing anything? Um, let's see. Uh, well, you see we've got a stab here. You catch the helpless royal jelly completely off guard. Um, is it? Here, so the royal jelly is struggling against the net. The royal jelly struggles against the net. Uh, so when he's in the net, he can't melee attack. So he's actually not doing anything to us. Nice, and now he's dead. So, And our phantom mirrored royal jelly is still here to help us fight. Alright, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, pretty easy rune if you know the the tricks that the devs don't want you to know. Another good tip is that uh, reading a scroll of immolation so that when once the jellies start dying they all blow up is really good too. But I don't want to do that as a beer for lore. If beer ever gives us orcs as that's happening, they're going to get burnt, we're going to get put under penance. Um, beer will be angry. And I'll show you one last tip. Um, I think the devs are okay with this one, but it's a handy tip to know. Notice how we're minus 16 corrode right now. Um, we're not we're not really about to die, but let's say that minus 16 corrode is a an existential threat to you. You can't fight when you're that corroded. Uh, you're taking huge amounts of damage. Uh, you can get rid of corrode by quaffing a pr a potion of cancellation. Uh, note that will also cancel off your other buffs, so we would lose our agi, our resistance, and our haste. But let's just say you're in a situation where you really need to get rid of corrosion. Cancellation works. I feel like that's something that newer players often don't know. Alright, and let's rest up. We may as well go grab our... No, I changed my mind. We should not have gone to grab our bolts. Uh, we, we're still resistant, so... Minus 20 corrosion. Okay, well we fought him. Let's go back to the stairs. This is too much corrosion. Uh, we could have always used Smite on him. Smite does not care how corroded you are. And let's go see what's in here. Um, 
and azure jelly. Okay, crossbows to five. Let's see. This has song of slaying. That's a cool spell. Uh, Passage of Gulubria. Okay, well, we at least want this in our list of potential spells. Very, very useful spell. Um, oh, we have regen as well. That should be in our list. What else do we have? Um, I haven't gone through this in a while, so I probably should. Um, I'm probably not going to bother with Song of Sling, although I do love it as a spell. Um, so we put region in. Let's do... Uh, that's probably it. And the one we just picked up, which is Passage of Gulubria. Oh, Vile Clutch, actually. That's a good one. A necromancy spell. We're considering using our double necromancy um, manuals that we found to <laughs> catapult us into the Necronomicon. Uh, in which case, we might want to use things like Death Channel. Uh, Alright, well, we'll put Death Channel in our list of maybes. Could be some interesting things. Um, I think, well, Death Store, I don't know if we'd use that, but maybe we're going to use all the high level necromancy spells. Simulacrum, great spell but not so good in extended. You need corpses to use it, um, which all the demons in extended don't give you corpses. I mean, if you have Kiko, you've always got core corpses, but we'll never have Kiko, only Beer. Uh, let's identify this rope. Int plus eight. Okay, all right. Uh, this extra int plus eight might allow us to cast Shadow with no, um, with no training. Uh, I'm tempted to find out. You know what? This scroll of acquirement. So uh, I remember the last time we did a armor, I think. At this point, I would love to be super lucky and get a, um, a holy broad axe. So I'm willing to just completely roll the dice on that. Let's get another weapon. I mean, it's a glowing longbow. <laughs> We got trolled. Uh, that's that wasn't lucky at all. That was the opposite of lucky. Here's a manual of translocations, which will work excellently with the passage of Gulubria that we picked up. Uh, we found the Lajatang of Order. Does that staves? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's the Lajatang. It's two-handed. I was gonna say, uh, if that cross trains with our axes, we could potentially wield this to try to prevent getting mutated. It's one of the few remaining items that has resistance to mutation, but we can't use it with a shield anyway, so that's irrelevant. Manual short blades, I don't care about. Um, I guess we'll ID this amulet. Acrobat, no biggie. The amulet of the four winds. Um, extra RN, MR++++ plus 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 and clarity. This would solve all our MR problems forever, but again, Mm, we can. We've got three pips already. We can get four pips if we really want it. So I think I'd rather just keep the um, whatever amulet we're currently wearing. Why am I so bad with names? Someone help me. Um, amulet of faith. Infusion spider form excruciating wounds. No thank you. And a manual of maces and flails again. No thank you. All right, so that's our our loot for slime done. I don't really care about a fine hand axe. That was really really disappointing off that uh, acquirement scroll. I should be picking up these box of base. Um, it's really good even with no evocations, and we have five, and we might learn more in the future. Um, you know what? Now that we've got this extra in, I'm willing to try again. Okay, let's go back to Zort. <laughs> uh, so if you're trying to stack all the int you can get, you're of course going to identify all the artifact robes that you find. Because uh, robes don't have any casting penalty at all. Alright, back to Zot 4. Oh, right, we're already on the upstairs. My bad. Um, okay, so we left our other gear here. Uh, no, we're not on Zot 4 yet. We left it here. Okay, so we want 
Uh, all this stuff. Uh, we can't carry it all. <laughs> we need to drop the stuff. Uh, we'll drop these random weapons. Um, at this point, we're going to be heading into extended next. Our wonder paralysis is not that big a deal. We've only got five evocations. It might become better if we ever train more evocations, but uh, for a while it's not going to do much. So let's um, head over here first. Okay, now let's get ready. I, I still don't know if this will work, but this will help us a bit. So we need to take our shield off. Uh, we need to take our armor off. And in fact, put on our plus eight int robe. Yup, really wear it. We want to wield, I still don't know which is better, this uncursed staff of wizardry or the plus eight scimitar that has plus eight int, uh, because both of them stayed on 100% chance to fail before. So um, I guess we'll start with wizardry and let's also put on these two rings of wizardry. Okay, so our shadow's still 100%. That's still not too surprising, and we're going to try Quaffing Brilliance now. Um, have I forgotten anything else? Uh, let's try the Scimitar, maybe that will bring it down. No, it's 100% as well. So we'll Quaff the Brilliance. 100%, <laughs> okay. 100%, alright, so still not good enough. Even with 38 int and a bunch of wizardry, you cannot cast Shadow with zero skill. Alright. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, we'll drop our gear here. I think next we'll train, um, well we're dealing with our crossbow first, but next for science we'll train five points of earth magic and then we'll see if we can cast shadow. Um, okay, so we drop the scimitar, we drop our robe. Um, the stuff of wizardry I wanna keep because we might want that for casting passage of Glubria and stuff like that. Um, now let's drop. The wizardry rings. <laughs> we'll pick up these weapons. Uh, why can't? Oh, because we're still right. We're still wearing a cursed cloak. Let's get dressed again too. Uh, this you might have been embarrassed by doing this once upon a time when um, enemies could still spawn later on floors, but that's not possible anymore. So I know that. While I'm walking around on this floor, um, even if I'm naked, not wearing a shield, no enemies will ever show up. Alright, um, I think we're good. Okay, let's put our, our proper rings on. Protection from magic and the slaying ring. Um, how much RN do we have? We've got two. Um, but I know we have a, a double RN ring. That's maybe the one that we're going to want in Extended. Uh, because it's time to go Extended. Time to take Bio for an Extended ride. Uh, we've got our five runes. So the question is, where do we go now? Well, different players have different preferences for doing Hell or Pan. Uh, my preference is a little bit of both. When I first started, I always did Hell first. And then I later found out that most people did Pan first. So that was kind of a bit of a, a mind spin for me. Um, I tend to do a little bit of both. I do some of Hell and then I go to Pan. Although maybe for Bio it's better to do Pan. I don't know. The point is, before you do either of those, it makes sense to clear out the Vestibule of Hell. Uh, because that's much easier than any of the actual Hell branches or Pan. So we're going to go there first. Oh, we need to, whoops, I accidentally ran straight in. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's fight the Kaka Demon. I'm surprised he didn't mutate us there. Uh, before we did that, I wanted to do our Broad Axe. This is on Depths 5, I'll try to remember that. So there's one Broad Axe that's enchanted, it's in Vaults. The lack of Broad Axes in this game is mind-boggling. is okay it's a plus one broad axe that's really not very exciting um, but all the same oh we left our brand weapons elsewhere uh, they're both in depths brand weapon 
try not to do our um, plus nine one. Okay, we've got a broad axe of draining. Pretty good brand in a three ring game. Almost utterly useless in extended because everything is either immune to negative energy or very resistant. So that's a useless brand. Let's go get the other one. Actually, while we're here, let's drop the enchant weapon scroll we're carrying. Apparently, I already did. Alright, so last brand weapon. Come on, Alec. We haven't been lucky yet so far this episode. Can we have the Alec? We got freezing, so it's basically just a worse version of our current axe. Alright. Uh, haven't been lucky on the axe front, unfortunately. Um, what we... No. Eh, maybe. What we could do... So... Um, our axes has cross-trained with maces and flails, and there's also a maces and flails um, manual around. One potential thing that we could do is use a demon whip of anti-magic. There's one of those in depths too. Anti-magic is really strong against a lot of things in extended. Um, demons hand lords, hell lords, all of those things, when you're anti-magicking them, they have a much harder time casting spells. Um, the downside of that is that when we're wielding anti-magic, our, um, our max amount of magic points is lowered significantly. And because our MP directly converts into smites, um, that's not great. So I don't know. We can, we can try it off or start off with Broad Axe of Freezing and we'll see how we go. But it's another option that exists. At some point we could use the um, Demon Whip. So Hell was on D4. Depths 4. Um, I want to bring someone to train with us. Where is Hell? It's over here. Um, well, let's recall everyone up to Depths 3. And we'll see if we can't get an Orc Knight or someone with us. So I stopped the recall. We've got Warrock and the Orc Knight. Um, we can get rid of Warrock. We'll just take the Orc Knight. We'll train him up. It's Ogric. Ogric, by the way. Oh yeah, no, we left stuff down here. That's okay. Uh, I'll bring him over to the Hell Entrance, if I can find it here. Oh, okay, there's an, a bunch of other dudes coming. Alright, well, that didn't go the way that I planned. Right, right, because I left... I stopped the recall, but I left everyone on this floor. So that was never going to work. Okay, I'll leave Ogric there. I'll bring all these ones up. Um, maybe we can bring him with us just to hell. Actually, change of plans. Um, I want to do the ones who are already guarding it. I want to pull them away. Have I done that? I think I might have done that. Ah, okay, this works. So we've got a few others with us, including Spirok. So I'm going to tell them to guard this area, and then I'm going to stair dance. Oh, we're right next to the wall, though. That's really um, enticing. So... This wall here, it looks like it's really funky, but in fact it's a rock wall, so you can dig it. Can you dig it? Yes, you can. Um, so it's really good to make a kill hole in. Um, you see here, Goyon? He will never come upstairs, so don't even try to stair pull him. He's also somewhat dangerous with stair pulling, um, if you're trying to fight him in the open. He makes Hell Beasts. Hell Beasts, much like elephants, have trample. So he, his hell beast can trample you off the stairs, and then if you're stuck here in the open, you might have a bad time. Um, let's stair pull up what we can. Yeah, look at all these hell beasts he's spamming. Um, I should wait a bit so that the hell beasts um, wear off. You don't. Also, you don't really need to have any particular resistances for this vestibule of hell because most of the enemies you fight here are just going to be. Um, random undead zombies and that sort of thing. I guess we can pull these up. 
I mean, at this point in the game, you normally have at least your standard resistances where you probably have some RF, some RC, um, and so on. But the rest of hell is not like the pan floors later on, where we're, we're going to want to have max RF or max RC, that sort of a thing. Okay, well now we've mostly just got Goyon. We're being constricted by an anaconda zombie. Um, that's just really dangerous. Um, I'm going to try to get rid of the Orc Warlord. I don't want to bring him in. I want to just bring in Ogric if I could. Yeah, okay, come back, Ogric. Arbolt, the Orc Sorcerer, is also coming, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. Um, and then we're going to fight here. Not that much stuff has come to assault us here in the open, uh, but what we could have done, and I'll demonstrate it to you, is run to these walls and then dig a kill hole like this. And so we could have, pretend we don't have the sorcerer and it was just us and Ogric. We could sit here like this. This tile is the only one where monsters can see us and they would all filter in one at a time and the two of us would be able to attack because Ogric would be reaching over our shoulder. Um, so here's a really scary enemy. It's a Hellion, has cooldown damnation. Um, Damnation cannot miss, ignores your AC, it really hurts. Uh, fortunately, Hellions are quite um, flimsy, so Smite kills them really quickly. Note that they, they don't have C invisible, but if you, have, if you have other followers with you, such as Orcs, that they can see, they will still hit you. So with Orc followers, don't try to go invis. What you do is you just Smite them, and there you go. We, Smote it to death in one go. So I remember, uh, who was it? I think it was Justin Noob said earlier, looking forward to seeing you, uh, or no, what do you say? Uh, looking forward to seeing you trying to herd orcs around tormentors and hellions. Uh, that's how you do it. You don't you don't herd the orcs. You just one shot smite kill the hellion. Um, okay. Uh, the the horn of Goyen. Um, pretty powerful item, but works better with evocations. So for us, it's not going to do too much. It's an evocable like a file of floods where it has a cooldown. So you can use it to make hell beasts, and then you wait for a while, it will recharge, and you can make more of them again. Um, but I'm not going to bother. Okay, let's just clear this. It's going to, it's going to open our four, um, well not open, but find our four hell portals. Uh, this was this, I think. So there's Dis, the Iron City, there's Gehenna, uh, which is the Fire City. Yeah, these guys are extremely strong. They're pretty much, Ogric I think is pretty much doomed here. So the Soul Eaters um, are just too strong when you have a bunch of Orc followers because their Drain Life heals them. So you just, you cannot kill them. Uh, yeah, Ogric's dead. Okay, I'm hoping he makes a corpse. He did. All right, you're back, Ogric. I wasn't even worried. We had we had six pips of piety. You were coming back. I, I had faith, and here you are. But yeah, it's just it's just funny. They're just the soul leader. It's just a totally random enemy that usually isn't very threatening. But because you have a bunch of orcs for it to drain life off, they just become impossible to kill. They just keep draining your life until they kill all your orc followers. Um, there's all this invis stuff around us. I'm being lazy, but we should just put our C invis ring back on. Uh, crossbows are going to 7, well on its way to 10. Uh, this is Tartarus, that's the undead branch. And we have last but not least, in fact, the least least. It's Kikaitis, which is the cold branch. Uh, this place is probably the worst hell. I feel like Ogric should, Ogric should get out of the freezing clouds. Um, it's just we're just getting spammed by these statues. They're not threatening, but they are annoying. <laughs> which is exactly what you want in an enemy. <laughs> uh, I think we've more or less cleared our our vestibule hell. Yeah. Okay, 
Uh, so that's going to be it for this episode. In the next one, I'm not sure what we'll do, whether we'll start going into hell or if we'll head into pan, but we're going to be starting out a real extended content. You can see how beer goes in a 15 room game. See you all next time.